Hey, friends. Latency sucks. Gotcha. Here's a fun and entertaining, comprehensive guide to dealing with latency in Ableton Live in every possible way that it can show up. So simply put, latency is delay or lag between when you play a note and when you actually hear it. This can happen with MIDI or audio. But if you watch this video from beginning to end, there will be no latency issue that you can't solve and your Ableton life will likely get noticeably easier because maybe up until this point, you've been doing things in an unoptimized way, okay? So first of all, latency can show up in two main ways. First is via your audio hardware, either your computer hardware or an audio interface. And the second way is via plugin or device processing within your actual Ableton project. So let's address the first and look at audio hardware settings. It's simple, so we're gonna fly through this. Let's go. All right, so go up to your Ableton settings or your Ableton preferences and go to the audio tab. Once you've chose a driver, likely on Mac you're choosing Core Audio, and then on Windows you're choosing the driver that comes with your audio interface. And if you don't have an audio interface, I recommend that you download ASIO for All, which is a low latency driver. So once you've chosen your driver, you then choose your input and output audio device. So in this case, I've got my universal audio interface selected as my input and output device. So all audio hardware input and output devices have latency associated with them. This is the same for all DAWs. It's not specific to Ableton. Essentially, it takes a small amount of time for analog audio to be turned into digital on the way in, and then for digital audio to be turned back into analog on the way out. Ableton actually shows you this amount in the latency tab right here. Now, of course, this number can change depending upon which device you have selected, your sample rate, and your buffer size. We can see our input latency, we can see our output latency, and we can see our overall latency of 12.5 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and turn off the input. And just to demonstrate, with the same exact audio settings, I'm gonna to switch to a different device. Let's switch to the MacBook Pro speakers. And we can see that at 48K, at 128 samples of buffer size, we have 5.67 milliseconds of delay. If I were to switch this, for example, to another audio interface that's attached to my computer, 13.2 milliseconds. And if I switch back to Universal Audio, we can see 3.81 milliseconds. So the Universal Audio interface is somewhere between like consumer and professional uh, when it comes to audio interfaces. So it's got a much better driver. So it's kind of a better piece of hardware. And so therefore it has a lower output latency. Hey, quick edit here. I don't wanna give you the impression that you need a Universal Audio interface or a really nice interface to get a uh, low latency. We're just talking about the difference between literally two milliseconds between the max uh, inbuilt output latency and then the universal audios. It's just two milliseconds. It doesn't matter. It's a negligible amount of time. You'd likely never notice it, okay? So again, your output latency can change depending upon which audio device you're using. But let's go ahead and look at buffer size. Essentially, you can think of buffer size as like a YouTube video, how much of the video is loaded versus where the playhead is. So a lower buffer size will reduce your latency, whereas a larger buffer size will increase it. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna switch this back to universal audio. We've got 12.5 milliseconds of overall latency. If I increase my buffer size, let's go all the way up here, <laughs> 92.5 milliseconds. If I go all the way down to 32, wow. 8.52 milliseconds, super fast. So the general take here is to set your buffer size at the lowest setting that you can get away with. A lower buffer size is gonna make your computer work harder, but you'll get lower latency doing this. I tend to leave mine at 128 samples. So on this M1 MacBook Pro, at the settings that I have here, my universal audio interface gives me a round trip latency of 12.5 milliseconds, which is pretty fast and perfectly fine for recording and playing back audio. Now, lots of folks, especially beginners, think that once you get this 12.5 number or whatever number you get, you're supposed to go down here and add it to the driver error compensation. Now listen to me, don't do this. This will throw all of your recordings off timing. Part of an audio driver's job is to accurately report the latency that they create. If you're using any popular or modern audio interface, likely you're good. However, if after you've watched this whole video and used all of my best practices here and you're still experiencing timing issues, you should go in and take Ableton's inbuilt lesson where it shows you how to compensate for driver errors. And the way that you get to that lesson is you go up to help, you go to inbuilt lessons, you then choose show all inbuilt lessons, and then you go down to driver error compensation, and then this will show you how to adjust for that. But again, it's exceedingly rare for audio drivers not to report the latency that they create. So yeah, audio hardware and how latency can show up via audio hardware is a very basic concept. You just crank the buffer size down as low as you can get away with it and still have enough processing to do your set, and you'll get really low latency. Let's look at one more thing real quick. So here I am in an Ableton set, and I've got these electric keys, right? 
So I'm not experiencing any noticeable latency and anything below 20 milliseconds of latency, you're really just not gonna experience. And right now, because I'm playing a MIDI instrument, I'm only looking at the output latency. So I'm really only experiencing four milliseconds of output latency. And that's because I've set my buffer really low. But if I were to set my buffer at like 2,048 samples, okay? Now look at this, it says 43.8 milliseconds. Now watch my hands. You can hear and see that now the keys are late because I've added so much output latency, okay? So that is, again, the first way that latency can show up in your Ableton experience, and that's by having latency show up via your hardware settings, okay? So I'm gonna put this back at 128. So hey, real quick, I wanted to tell you that I'm running the biggest sale of the year on my Ableton courses right now, this week. There are over 100 hours of deep and thorough lessons all updated for Ableton 12. And there are only about half of the available slots left at this price level. My courses are very high rated because they actually are helping people achieve results. Also, Ableton is offering 25% off Ableton Live until December 2nd. And happily, our discount stacks on top of that. So if you join Seed to Stage this week, you can get Ableton Live for a total of over 50% off. The discount also applies to upgrades if you're trying to upgrade to Ableton 12. So if you've been struggling with Ableton Live, I invite you to join our friendly course community. You can learn more about it up here or down in the description. Let's get back to it. Now, the second way that latency can show up is just as basic as the first, but folks make this stuff really complicated for no reason at all. Nine times out of 10, if you're experiencing bad latency that you haven't experienced before and that you're not experiencing in other sets, then it's probably coming from a plugin or an Ableton device in one or more of your tracks. Some plugins, especially limiters, dynamics processing, distortions, and so on, they create latency in order to do their thing. If this happens to you, you need to check your set for plugins or devices that you've used that are creating latency and therefore causing delay. Let me show you how. So again, these electric keys, they feel pretty instant to me, right? But let's go ahead and grab an instance of FabFilter Pro L2. This plugin makes latency in order to accomplish its task, okay? Now, latency is not bad, okay? I don't know why people associate latency with a bad thing. I'm happy that latency exists, okay? Because some plugins sound really good because they're utilizing latency. The latency that a limiter needs to use, for example, probably has something to do with its oversampling, it has something to do with its look ahead time. Basically, it can properly analyze your audio before you hear it and therefore do a great job of what it does. Now, if I were to take this plugin and duplicate it, a bunch of times. Let's just say that this is your mastering chain, all right? I'm not gonna, you know, put a bunch of different plugins in here, but commonly on the main or the master, folks will put a bunch of dynamics processing and other plugins that create latency, okay? Check this out. Now when I play, uh-oh, look how late that is, right? Why are we experiencing latency? Well, let's go ahead and hover over the title bar of this Pro L2. Check this out. If you hover your mouse over the title bar of any device in Ableton, whether it's a plugin or a native device, it will show you the reported latency that it takes for that device to actually be in use, okay? So in this case, the Pro L2 takes 64.9 milliseconds of latency. Now, you, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't sound like 64.9 milliseconds. That actually sounds more like 500 milliseconds. And you're right, because I've duplicated this plug in, what, six times here? So whatever six times 64.9 is, that's now my overall latency. And what else to know is that that's added to the 3.81 milliseconds of output latency that I already have existing in the system. Okay, so when you're experiencing latency, you're experiencing the addition of the output latency plus whatever the total latency of all the plugins that create latency in your set are, okay? What this is called is plugin delay compensation. Why does plug and delay compensation exist? Well, the reason it exists is so that all of your tracks play back in sync with each other, okay? If you didn't have plug and delay compensation, your set would be a hot mess, okay? <laughs> so again, latency is not a problem. It's something to work with. And Ableton has given us a plethora of different ways to deal with latency, okay? So let me show you this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these Pro L2s and let's go through my set. In this first track, we have a utility. It makes zero samples of latency. Hybrid reverb, zero samples. This delay, zero samples. This envelope follower, zero samples. Let's go into the drums. This glue compressor, zero samples. Amazingly, 
zero samples. That's incredible. Uh, you know, going on to kilohertz, this is a transient shaper. It's a third party plugin. It still makes zero samples of latency. The only plugin or device in this entire set that makes any latency is the new Dyad uh, percussive sequencer by fours. And it makes a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of latency. Let me show you. So here's the keys. And it makes 2.7 milliseconds of latency. If I delete it, I don't feel the difference at all. 2.7 milliseconds is an exceedingly low amount of latency. It doesn't matter, okay? I can't feel that at all. It's just a negligible amount. And again, anything really below 20 milliseconds of total latency, you're really not gonna experience that much. It's just, it's just not gonna be significant enough for you to experience that, okay? So yeah, as you can see, some plugins and devices create latency and others don't. I've actually made a handy list of Ableton native devices that make latency, how much latency they make, as well as Ableton native devices that don't make any latency at all. You can check that out on a blog on my website. The link is up here or down in the description. This will be really helpful for you so that you can start to develop best practices when it comes to when to use which plugins, all right? So check that out. Cool, so now let's move into the second phase of this video, and these are a bunch of different strategies that you can use when it comes to managing latency, because latency is there whether you want it to be or not in any DAW that you use. Now we're gonna look at a bunch of different scenarios and different ways to deal with latency if it comes up in your set. Let's do it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is that it's not always practical to not use plugins that make latency or make plugin delay compensation. It's not always practical to do that. For example, in this set, I'm working on some sound design, right? And I've added a spectral resonator. And spectral plugins are notorious for creating a lot of latency. In this case, 32 milliseconds to use spectral resonator. But it makes this really cool sound, right? But if I wanna play my keys, my keys are now late because I've added 32 milliseconds of latency to my entire set. So what do you do in this case? Well, my recommendation is to simply record the output of the track into another track and then delete the resonator. So for example, I could make a new audio track here and choose Dyad, which is the name of this track as the input, right? Now, in order to do this properly, you need to switch the track monitoring to off. We'll get into why this is the case in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and record this into a new track. Right? And then the move is just to delete the plugin or plugins that you've used that create that latency in the first place, right? So bam, it's gone. And now not only have I captured the audio, but if I go back to my keys where I wanna play some MIDI, it's snappy and perfect, right? So there is no reason why you can't add plugins while you're working on a set and you might record some MIDI later. There's no reason why you can't add plugins and mess around with them. Just record the output and then delete them. It's that simple. But that's not all. There are other ways that Ableton has actually given us the ability to play without latency and to record without latency without noticing that latency while still using those plugins, okay? So let's get into that. So let's look at another way to manage latency. Let's make a bunch of really annoying latency. Let's grab a... Uh, the Spectral Time plugin. This one makes so much latency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna turn the dry wet all the way down, okay? And then I'm gonna put it on its highest resolution mode. And <laughs> this makes 106.7 milliseconds of latency and you won't even hear it. It's just so silly, right? All right, so I've duplicated it four times and now we have 400 milliseconds of latency. That's so much latency, that sucks, right? But I can still play my keys with super low latency. There's a way to do this, let me show you. So. In Ableton, if you go up to your options, you can choose this thing called reduced latency when monitoring, okay? Now check this out. If I turn this on, what this will do is that any of the tracks that I'm monitoring, okay? So in this case, I'm, I've got my auto switch on the three electric, right? It will actually remove any of the plug-in delay from any of the other tracks, and it'll isolate this track and not apply the plug-in delay compensation to just this track, so check it out. So now I can easily record this track and not have any issues. And as you can see, my playing is gonna be rock solid where I played it, okay? Now, a lot of folks will use reduced latency when monitoring and it won't fix their latency issue, okay? That's because you have to understand what this actually does. When you turn on reduced latency when monitoring, the tracks that you are monitoring, those are going to not have latency associated with them. But if you have plugins, for example, let's take all these spectral times. I'm just gonna copy them and delete them from here. And I'm gonna put them on my master track, okay? Check this out. So now I have three, let's put four on there just for the heck of it. 
So now I have four spectral times, creating a total of uh, 440 milliseconds of plug-in delay. Those are now in my master track. And so even though I have reduced latency when monitoring, set to on, uh, I've got so much latency still, right? That sucks. But you have to understand what this is actually doing. I'm routing this track, okay? I'm routing this track right here. I'm routing it through my main, okay? Or my master track. So I'm routing it through a track that has what? 440 milliseconds of plug and delay or latency. So the way I can get around that is I can just choose my external output. So whatever my mains output is set to, in this case, for you to hear my audio, it's 11 and 12, but most of the time yours is gonna be set to one and two. Just choose external out and then choose one and two likely for you, but for in my case, 11 and 12. Now check this out. Ooh, <laughs> it's immediate, right? So that's yet another way that you can get around this issue. But now let's look at some other scenarios. Now, one other scenario that I should definitely go over is that regardless if you have a high buffer size set because you've got a bunch of processing going on, or you've got a bunch of bad latency because you have loads of plugins in your set, you can always record audio using what's called direct monitoring. And what this means is that instead of listening to the playback of your signal through Ableton Live, you're listening to the signal directly through your audio interface. And while I can't break down how to do this on every interface under the sun, what I can show you is this. So here's the mixer for my interface. This is the UAD mixer. All I would have to do to direct monitor my voice, which is coming down channel two, is simply click mute here and then unmute the channel. And then I'll be able to hear my voice coming directly through my interface. So this is not subject to any latency other than the input latency of the actual hardware, okay? So it's, it's near immediate, right? So this could be a solution that works for you. Now, the trade-off with direct monitoring is while you will hear the signal immediately and perfectly without any latency, you also wouldn't be able to hear any of the effects that you'd want to use on the track until it's been recorded and you hit play. Most all interfaces can do this in their software mixers. Just know that once you turn an input up in your software mixer for your interface, you might actually hear the signal twice. And what sounds like a cool doubler effect is just you hearing both the delayed Ableton signal and the direct one. And one more quick reminder, if you're doing direct monitoring and you want to record with perfect timing, you want to set your monitoring to off on the channel that you're going to be recording, okay? Otherwise, you're going to get that delay printed onto the audio. Now, in my opinion, I still think that it's superior to use the reduced latency while monitoring feature so you can make great low latency signal chains that are flexible to monitor instead because not all audio interfaces have effects built into their monitoring system. Okay, so to help you further understand, now I have my guitar here and let's go ahead and look at this track. So I've loaded up one of my guitar racks, the uh, Spanky Compressor. Right? And if you want my guitar racks, they're up here or down in the description. Right now, I've set Ableton's buffer size a little bit high, okay? Uh, we're at 1,024 uh, samples. Let's say that I need to do that in order to achieve my set, in order to get my computer to play back without glitches because I've got so much processing on it or something, right? So check this out. If I duplicate this track and I record this track, one with the auto switch off and one with the auto switch on, um, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just record this part real quick. Okay, so I've recorded two tracks here, and if you're zoomed out like this, it probably looks like there isn't a difference. But if I zoom in here, you can see that there is a delay on the track that has the auto switch on. And then if the auto switch is off, then you can see that there isn't that delay. What's going on with that? So a lot of folks, and myself included back in the day, used to look at this as like a problem with Ableton. This is not a problem, okay? The reason that this is the case is that Ableton is making the assumption that as a musician, when you hear yourself back, that's what you're gonna base your timing off of. And this isn't always the case. This is probably the case when you have low amounts of delay. And so if I have, for example, my buffer size set down to, I don't know, if I have it set down to 128, I could reliably record this part on my guitar and not worry about the latency. But if I have my latency up this high, some timing issues can actually start to occur, okay? And so there's a bunch of different solutions that Ableton has introduced in order to help us deal with this problem. So I'm gonna tab over to Session View and let's take a look at this. So Ableton 12 has introduced a new feature and if I go all the way down to the bottom here and I click on this little guy, I can look at the track options and it shows you, you know, the track delay. There's also this thing called Keep Latency. Now the idea here is that as a player of a physical instrument um, where there's a percussive aspect to it, I expect, or I might expect, the note to hit 
right when I, you know, pluck a string or something like that, especially with acoustic instruments, especially with vocals, and especially with drums, okay? If you turn this keep latency situation off, what will happen is Ableton will not commit the plug and delay compensation to compensate for your timing, okay? This will actually turn that off. Okay, so let's go ahead and record this part again. Now we can see if we zoom in, we've got the same timing on both of these tracks. Now maybe this will help you, maybe it won't, okay? It depends upon your settings. I think that if you have a high buffer size and you're recording a vocalist, for example, it might be a really good idea to turn this on because they are singing, right? And maybe they're not aware of even your setup and maybe they're just a musician and they don't have any technical skills. Maybe they're not aware of the fact that what they're hearing in their monitor is going to end up being their timing. So maybe this is a good thing to turn on in that specific situation, or especially with a drummer, they may adjust their playing or they may not. It just depends. This is a tool that you can use in the case that you're running into an issue. Ableton did not advertise this feature that much, and I think it's because it's sort of dangerous. It just, you have to understand what it does before you're going to make really good use of it, okay? So that's what the keep latency feature actually does for you, okay? So I've seen a bunch of rhetoric on the internet recently that by Ableton introducing the keep latency switch in Ableton 12, that they have fixed the software. Hopefully if you've been paying attention thus far, you'll know that they actually didn't have a problem in the first place to fix. Latency, again, is something that all DAWs, all plugins, and all audio hardware have to deal with. With the keep latency button, Ableton just gave us yet another tool to work with latency. So before you go in there and turn the switch off on every track that you record, just know that it very much depends on the application, and likely doing that would make more problems than it would solve. Instead, focus on the core tenets of what I've taught you thus far. Just try to keep your latency down until you've recorded all of your parts, and when that's not possible, use the reduce latency when monitoring workflow that I showed earlier. Now that doesn't mean that Ableton has fixed all of its problems. In fact, there is a really insidious problem that has lasted ever since Ableton has been created and it's, it drives me absolutely crazy and I really hope that they see this video and fix this problem. Okay, so here's the issue and Ableton, I hope you are watching this. If you have a, I have this pad right here, right? And if I turn on Infiltrator, Infiltrator just has, this is just a little uh, filter sequence that I have going on, right? Right, just a little swung like rhythm. Now, this is rock solid. This sounds really good, right? It's right on the money. But if I were to add a plugin prior to Infiltrator, and this plugin has some delay associated with it, like for example, let's just grab the Pro L2 again. Um, now, I know that normally you wouldn't put a limiter here in this case, but this is just illustrating a point. I mean, any plugin that has any delay at all, listen to the timing now. This problem has persisted forever. For some reason in Ableton, plugins are not reporting to each other what the actual plugin delay is, and this is just such a problem. And the reason it's a problem is that this is a really obvious case, right? I could just delete this uh, Pro L and then maybe figure out whatever I was trying to do with a plugin that makes less delay, right? But a lot of the time, there's plugins that only make a tiny little bit of delay. And what this does is this throws your set off micro timing wise and can just wreak havoc on transients and it just smears everything and your rhythm can be bad. So you gotta really pay attention when you're using a, a time-based effect, okay? A time-based effect such as this with a sequencer on it, right? You really need to pay attention when you're using these and make sure that plugins leading into these are not making delay, okay? Or else you're gonna throw your whole set off. Again, take a listen. And then if I delete it. Right, so you gotta be so careful. Now notice this, I put the Pro L on the other side of the plugin and now listen. It's perfectly fine, okay? So yeah, this is something that I really hope Ableton, if you're watching, you have to fix this. It's been way too long. Your software has been out for way too long for this problem to be here. Now, does that mean you can't use Ableton to make amazing music? I mean, come on guys. You just have to be aware of this issue, all right? You just have to be aware of certain things. Every single DAW has things that can hold you up. And in this case, this is Ableton, in my opinion, is one of their biggest problems. And you, you just have to know what you're doing. If you have a plugin before another plugin with um, a time-based sequencer on it, you're going to be wreaking havoc on your timing, okay? 
Okay, so the final things to understand when it comes to latency is how Ableton interfaces with things in the real world, such as an external audio processor, where you're sending audio out of your interface into an audio processor and then back into your interface. The same thing with a synthesizer. If you're sending MIDI out and then you're getting audio back in, Ableton already has built-in solutions for this. Let me show you. So first of all, here's my drums, right? Now, let's say I wanted to use an external audio processor to juice these drums up. In this case, I've got the awesome Overstayer modular channel. I love this thing. It's a distortion and a compressor and an EQ and so on. So let's say I wanted to, to spice these drums up and record the drums through this processor. Well, a lot of folks will just go to external out and then they'll choose the output that it's coming down and then they'll have another track set to in and then they'll just record the drums. Now the drums sound amazing, right? The Overstayer Modular Channel is an amazing little piece of hardware, but take a listen with everything else. Uh-oh, the drums are way off in timing, aren't they, right? How do you fix this? Well, Ableton, again, has already introduced solutions to fix this a long time ago. If you wanna use an external audio processor, you don't set it up this way. Let's start with the playback. So I'm gonna mute this track. Going into the drums track, instead of choosing it this way, I'm just gonna send this out to the main for, for a second. And let's go ahead and grab what's called external audio effect, okay? And when I drag this in here, what this does is this actually compensates for the entire latency inside of your set, okay? It's taking into account the round trip latency as well as the latency introduced by plugins, okay? Because it is itself a plugin, right? So let's choose audio out of six, and then my audio input would be four. So now when I play this, right? Perfectly on time, sounds super good. Now, if I wanted to record this, okay, if I wanted to record this into a new track, the way to do this is to monitor it through this external audio. But what I'll do is I'll make another track and instead of choosing external in, I'm going to choose the input from drums, okay? So now I can set the monitoring to off, right? Because I wanna make sure that I get that right audio. And let's go ahead and record this. And as we can see, perfectly on time audio, okay? Hey, so I wanted to quickly point out that if you are sending MIDI out of Ableton into a MIDI enabled synthesizer and then taking the audio output and running it back into Ableton, that's actually what external instrument is for. It calculates all the latency and is a plugin, so it's also delay compensated. It will get your timing rock solid. Now, unfortunately, I've seen some well-intentioned videos where people were showing the keep latency feature as the way that you navigate plugin delay and then hardware delay when it comes to using external synths. Unfortunately, that's not the case. It's actually external instrument. That's how you do this. And if you use external instrument with your external synths in Ableton, your timing will be exact, not slightly off. Like I've seen in some videos, it will be exact. Okay. So I just wanted to point that out. Hey, so if you're still with me after the super long video, thanks for sticking around and watching the whole thing. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Also, this channel is 100% sponsored by just me by uh, selling Ableton online courses. So if you vibe with my teaching style and you feel like you've gotten a lot of this video, maybe check out my courses. Uh, the link is up here and down in the description. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you.